Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. And in this video, I'm going to be doing a combination of a product review on my own accord. I'm not being sponsored by this company. 120 volt isolation transformer. Did pick it up off Amazon. I will say that overall, it's actually built fairly well, but considering the price point, I paid $174 for it. This is the 1000 watt version, although they have the 300, 500, and 2000 watt version. I don't really think it should be rated in watts. It's probably more rated as voltage amps, which uh, this is kind of the middle of the road. I don't need something this big because this alone weighs about 25 pounds. So it is extremely heavy in the 2000 watt version. We'll say that one is 33 pounds in this little box. So it's slightly bigger and it has to be because there is a very heavy, very large toroid transformer inside. I got a side view and you can actually see the toroid inside. I'm going to show you a couple pictures that I snapped when I took the cover off. And when I even got this off the truck and took it out of the box, the first thing I did was shake the box to see, oh, is there anything rattling inside? And sure enough, it was. You can see a picture in here. What was rattling wasn't terrible. It's the hot snot glue that you would typically find in a lot of these Chinese origin products where it's meant for, well, they use it for vibrational and for securing the components to the circuit boards and whatnot. But uh, this was just rattling around inside there. It's not the best material, but that was the first thing that I found. Wasn't too happy to see. You'll also see here, so the primary side of this transformer is bonded to the case of the enclosure here, which is exactly right. That's what it should be. And then on the output side, the ground or the earth ground is floating, meaning it's not connected to anything on the output outlets on the back of the unit. So after I got that piece of hot snot glue out of there, I went ahead and plugged it in for the first time. And one thing I really like about this particular unit is that it has a soft start. The soft start is basically allowing the transformer to get saturated without the really high spike of initial surge current when you first connect the toroid transformer just because of their design it's going to have a very high amperage draw for a very short period of time and that's got the potential to pop fuses pop circuit breakers uh depending and this is a pretty large one so yeah that is a very good feature to have and i'll show you what that looks like here's the startup procedure is turn on the circuit breaker that's built in. And as you can see, there's a, it's about a six second delay and it'll count down. And then you'll see on this display here, you have load utilization, how much load is on the transformer, your output voltage on the secondary, and then your input primary winding current. And that's important because you don't want to go and draw too much causing the breaker to trip also we have some indicators for an under voltage input voltage under if it's below a certain threshold and then you have an over voltage indicator here now it does boast that this does have under voltage and over voltage protection we're going to use an a variac or an auto former just to see at what point or what voltage that it will turn itself off and protect itself and, and all the equipment that's connected. Here we are on the back of the unit. I'm only putting a piece of tape over the serial number just for the sake of you know, not blasting it all over the internet. But the first flaw that I found, and it really wasn't that big of a deal, but the issue that I found was that this NEMA 5-15 plug, which is actually a combination, it can actually go those two circular indentations. It can use another world type of outlet it's meant to be universal connectivity and that's what this weird outlet looks is for this is actually a world outlet it can handle a variety of outlet connector types and the issue that i found again with respect to the application that you're going to be using this isolation transformer for the nema 5-15 was wired okay and this world outlet was initially upside down and that's not a big deal but if i wanted to say okay if i wanted for a particular application if i wanted to use this isolation transformer as its own separately derived system if i wanted to power all my audio equipment for example then if i wanted to go and bond its neutral lug to earth then i should be able to do that but i found that the orientation of the wiring inside the world outlet was wired wrong 
this this connector for this side of the transformer this was connected here and this one was connected here and not a big deal especially if you're not going to be doing any kind of grounding or using it as a separately derived system that is not a big deal but if you were to bond the neutral and ground with respect to the secondary winding here then if you were to go and use in a, here in a picture you can see that the hot and neutral were reversed i just went ahead and swapped these two wires on the world outlet here now these are consistent uh, as far as wiring is concerned once I figured out that issue with the outlets not being wired properly, I then checked with my tester to make sure that it was working properly. And I use a bonding jumper to bond the neutral lug to the ground lug of the secondary. And it now shows correct. And if I wanted to use it as a separately derived system, now each outlet is consistent with each other. And that was my main concern. Again, if you're using this for as an isolation, true isolation transformer, and you don't want any reference back to the primary earth ground, then the, what I just fixed, quote unquote, is not necessarily going to matter. Now that the outlet issue is sorted, I just did a quick test with an incandescent bulb to make sure that the primary and the secondary are truly isolated. You can see how the bulb lights up when I connect it across the two secondary windings on the outlets, and that makes the bulb light up. And then I will then check with the one side of the incandescent bulb to earth ground or the chassis and checking in between the two output secondary outlets wiring there and you can see that the bulb does not light up so there is a true isolation between the two and that's what we want now the test that i'm going to do here is to test the under voltage and over voltage thresholds at what point when I adjust it with my Variac here, right now it's outputting 122 volts to the isolation transformer, at what voltage will the relays cut off power to the outlets in the back of it uh, to protect itself, or at least notify me? So right now, I'd say the maximum is 132 volts. It's not really that accurate. That meter's off by a little bit. So let's go up a little bit higher. Now we're, we're in danger territory if you had something connected. Anything beyond 132 volts is probably a bad idea. Okay, so it just went into protect mode. Looks like there's a time delay, and then it'll try to re-engage the output, and then it goes into protect with this key. But obviously, we're that's what we want it to do, and it shows the overvoltage. Now we're going to go in the opposite direction and see what the under voltage is. So I would expect anything below 108 to 105, this should shut down the output, but it's still operating. They're at 95 volts. Let's bring it way down. 80 volts, still outputting. 70 volts. 60 volts. Oh. Looks like it can't read below 65 volts there. Yep. That's a problem. 35 volts? Look at it, it's getting dim. Oh, it just did it. 35 volts before it goes into protect mode on the under voltage? Yeah, because it's just going to continue to go into that countdown, but it doesn't have enough power to engage. I'll bring this back up. Yeah. Under voltage protection, no bueno, no good. For perspective, I have an APC Line R1200 autoformer, and very similar, all this basically does is that it will buck or boost the voltage depending on what's coming in versus what's going out. And eventually, as I bring the voltage down, you see that it will try to keep the output voltage on the right-hand side at a nominal 120 volts. But as I go lower and lower, so if I go down to 100 volts input, still getting 109 on the output, we're at 95. It's switched to a different tap, so we're back to 120. But eventually, here we are at 90 volts. Probably getting very close to when this is actually going to shut off. Below 80 volts is really, it's not going to be practical for any device to be powered. So at some point here, there it goes. 
So at about 76, 75 volts, this device will shut down completely until the input voltage is brought back up. So if I bring this back up to a nominal amount, there you go. It'll re-engage. That's the kind of functionality I'm expecting from this, but I'm not getting it. And just for sake of doing it, here's the over voltage. I have 150 volts going into this device, and then it is bucking it down to 132. Uh, I'm all the way up here, so if I was able to put a little bit more, I'm sure it would shut down. But I would expect the same thing at 145 volts input, this would shut down, which is fine. Here's another test setup. I have my kilowatt meter plugged into the isolation transformer, and then the isolation transformer is running to my Variac, which is powering a heat gun on low, and I'm using the Variac to vary the load on the isolation transformer. Now, according to the listing at the time of recording this video, it says that it can support 1,000 watts. I know better. I know it's not 1,000 watts. It's 1,000 voltage amps, which is different. And the way I can prove that is what we're going to do is we're going to set this to voltage amps. Hopefully you guys can see that okay. Right now it's pulling 17 and a half voltage amps. And as I start to increase the load, we're going to see as the load utilization goes higher, Well, let's get it all the way up to max before it starts to get to red. There we go. Well, that's about as high as I can get it. We're at about 1100 voltage amps and 523 watts. So voltage amps is the correct metric for rating these isolation transformers. I did reach out to the seller or the manufacturer on Amazon and it should be a couple days before I hear back. And honestly, I'm not gonna fault this isolation transformer too much just because that it likely is just a very poorly implemented control circuitry here. It really should be shutting down under voltage around 75, 80 volts, not 35. And the high voltage, yeah, it'll shut down at 145 input voltage, but it really should be shutting down at around 132. This is an isolation transformer. It's not really, you can't really expect much for an isolation transformer to have that kind of features when you're really just using it for isolation. If you're going to need over voltage and under voltage protection, an APC device like I showed in my previous segment would be work, would work perfectly or something similar. And the isolation is really why I bought this unit, but just something to be aware of. No one seems to be talking about it, but this is the proof that the under voltage and over voltage. It's not the best, but it works semi good. I got an answer back from the manufacturer. Here we are the next day. And I got some helpful news, maybe not the news I wanted to have. Uh, they are aware of the thresholds of 35 and 145, and it was actually set that way in the microcontroller that runs all of the advanced features for this isolation transformer. Now, I don't know why, and when I did ask why, they're like, well, that's what people were experiencing in the United States, and it was intentionally set like that at the factory. But you can reset it if you want to. And I says, okay, well, what's that involved? Well, here on the main board, there is the Logic microcontroller. It is a Nuvitone N76003. It's an 8051 series microcontroller. Uh, that's what I was able to research, and it involves desoldering it from the board, and which that I am capable of doing, but then I would need a program tool to reprogram it. I said, okay, well, that's not really something that I'm familiar with. But what they're going to do is they were, they gave me two options. They said either I can buy directly from them a new unit and have it imported from China, or they can send me the file with the new updated machine code to reprogram that chip, which I said, I would rather get the file for the new machine code. They set it for the 105 and the 132 thresholds that I wanted. And now I need to figure out how to program that chip. Now, I know some of you who are watching are probably thinking, well, this is a, just yet another Chinese crappy design. It's uh, They're not going to fix it. Well, I did request that they change those thresholds moving forward for any new production. In order to change it, it is quite involved. And this is where I'm going to 
reach out to the YouTube community. For anyone that's watching that knows how to program these microcontrollers, well, I'd like to learn a little bit about that myself. Well, it's a new project for me to do, but not included in this video. I'll make a separate video on that. Uh, if What tools do I need? What software do I need for this particular chip? I'm going to be getting the file here in the next day or two. I don't know what file format or what program they use, but if it's something that you guys are familiar with, please reach out to me directly. Uh, I have no problem taking this chip off, and then if I know what tools to get in order to reprogram it, I'll take a swing at it. Why not? Uh, but I'm just going to end the video here and say thank you all for watching and supporting the channel. If there's any questions on this particular device, let me know. I will say that it is it works perfectly for the application I'm going to be using it for to break the ground loops and bring down the noise slur of all my audio equipment. It definitely works well for that. But maybe at a later date, if I can get the right tools and the right knowledge and information to properly reprogram this chip with the file that they're sending me, I'll give it a try. Check you guys out soon. Thank you so much for watching.